When you think of the Finnezy Swamp, you may think of a tourist attraction or a great place to visit, but there is quite a bit of research that's taking place there. Rachel Gonzalez is the research manager at the Finnezy Center for Water Sciences. She's also our guest this morning, one on one with Richard Rogers. Rachel, great to have you with us this morning. I think a lot of people are not familiar with the Finnezy Center for Water Sciences. What is that arm of the uh, Finnezy Swamp? What are you guys doing? So we study the Savannah River a lot of the time, and what we study there, we have seven sites, and each month we go out and take water samples at those sites, and we bring them back to our lab and we analyze them for nutrients. So we're looking for things like phosphorus, organic carbons, and things on the nitrogen cycle. And you're not just here to talk about it, you've actually been in the, that's you in the blue shirt <laughs> yep. right there. What are you guys doing out there on this day? So that is, these are actually our SONs, it's our monitoring equipment that we use. Um, those are out there all of the time, and they collect pH, temperature, DO, and conductivity every 15 minutes. So we also have the longest continuous monitoring data set on the Savannah River. Now I want to put up a graphic. You have some, uh, some of the things you we use the Savannah River for. So we're going to put this up. Would you just take me through this to kind of describe the variety that we use the river for? Right. So the map is showing our seven sites with the blue dots, and you're also seeing where upstream we're using the river for things like hydroelectric power with the dams. Um, there's some important wildlife in the water. And also in the Augusta Shoals area, we do a lot of recreation in the river. And then as you go further down south, we're using a lot of industrial services um, like nuclear energy. They're using the water for their cooling towers. And then you get even further south and there's a lot of farming and irrigation that goes on with the Savannah River. And that dumps a lot of chemicals, I would guess, into the water south of Augusta. It can, it can. Now, uh, I mean downstream from Augusta. Mm -hmm. Now, one of those fish up there, I, is that the sturgeon that we hear so much that, about? That is the sturgeon. Now, <laughs> the reason that is even important is because when it comes to the lock and dam and replacing it, the Army Corps of Engineers says that's an important fish, we need to watch out for it. Right. Does that mean we have a bunch of sturgeons uh, downstream of the Lock and Dam trying to get upstream? So we actually partner with South Carolina Department of Natural Resources and we download some data for them. And with that data, we are seeing pings of tracked sturgeon that come up to the Lock and Dam and are breeding and spawning there in a sandy area right below the Lock and Dam. Now there is historical data that says that previously before the dam, they were breeding and spawning further upstream than that. So they're saying that if we do remove the lock and dam, and that's what the, the Corps wants mm -hmm. to do, those sturgeon can make their way farther upstream. They could. Um, I guess it would be... Up um, to the sturgeon. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, why do you think it's important for us to study the water quality of the Savannah River? So it's important because, you know, we use the river for so many things, and the important thing is that you always want to remember you're upstream of somebody else. So in that graphic we saw, our wastewater treatment plant here in Augusta outputs into the Savannah River, and downstream in the city of Savannah, they're taking that in for their drinking water. And we're downstream of places like North Augusta. Sure. So you studied the river for a few years. What's your overall grade if you had to slap a grade on the Savannah <laughs> River? Or would you say it depends on where we test? I would say it depends on lot, a lot on where you test and when you test. Um, there are things that can be point source pollutants, and there are things that normally on an everyday, I would say the river is pretty healthy. We use the river for recreation quite a bit here, mm -hmm. more so than they do downstream in the Savannah area. Right. Ours is all about recreation. Do you think it's a safe river for recreation? Absolutely. What about fishing? If you were out to fish and brought some fish home from the Savannah River, would you feel safe eating those fish? I think I would feel safe eating those fish. So that, that says a lot about the water mm -hmm. quality here. Uh, now let's talk about another graphic we're gonna put up because it's all about dissolved oxygen. Uh, let's put that one up on the, the screen so everybody at home can see that one. What is the big deal about dissolved oxygen and what are those colors telling us? So those are all of our different sites that we have SONs at. And what dissolved oxygen is, is the available oxygen in the water for wildlife like fish and plants. And it's important because every species of fish has a certain threshold that has to be met in dissolved oxygen in order for them to survive. So if you have good dissolved oxygen, then you're gonna have a thriving ecosystem and a lot of fish. So basically is purple good, green bad? Um, those are just the colors for the different sites. So I each see. one of those is a color 
code, it goes from Hammonds Ferry all the way down to Clio, Georgia, and so upstream to downstream. And in Clio, uh, would the, uh, the levels be lower than uh, upstream at Hammonds Ferry? Yes, because upstream in Hammonds Ferry, we have a lot of the Augusta Shoals, so the water is churning a lot more, and that's getting a lot more dissolved oxygen in there. Is that concerning at all for folks downstream in the Clio area? No, because they're still well above those thresholds for most fish. Got you. Okay, so the Savannah River overall is healthy, uh, depending on where you test. What about those big uh, industries that are downstream of Augusta? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they pour a lot into the Savannah River. Do you, do you guys test around those areas? Yeah, so we purposely picked our sites to be around some of those areas, and from what we've seen, there's not been any big pollutants or anything in the river. Now, um, how often do you do this? How often do you get out and, and uh, test the water? So we're out every month. Once a month, mm -hmm. so quite frequently. Yes. And are you, are you overall satisfied? Are there times of year where, you know, like after a rainfall, we might mm -hmm. get more pollutants washed into the savanna? Do you, is that what you find? Um, that is possible. And anytime we see something that's a little higher than normal, what we do is we go out and resample. And if it's still high, then that's when we would notify our project partners and people in EPD and that nature. I was going to ask, who, who gets these reports? Who do you push them up to? So we partner with a lot of local municipalities, and they're going to be who get those reports and also people at the EPD. And our data is always publicly available. Now, do you have staff that covers all this, uh, that work with you like here in the boat, or do you mm -hmm. need volunteers from the community? What can we do to help you out keeping the water clean? Yeah, so we have full-time staff that go out and do this, but we also take interns every semester. And so those interns are a great help with us. There's a lot of science going on at Finnezy Swamp that I think people are unaware of. Do you have anything else with the lab going on out there that uh, you want to talk about? Um, we do a lot of projects around the city of Augusta. We monitor creeks around the city of Augusta. Um, we do bacteria testing. Um, and any industry that wants to reach out and needs us to do any kind of testing, we do that as well. So I hear you saying overall our water uh, in the Savannah River is healthy. What's your biggest concern? What's the biggest threat facing our river? Um, I would say just making sure that industries aren't putting anything into the river, which our nutrient monitoring helps us to know if anything out of ordinary is going on. And do you guys work with the River Keeper? I know that, that they're focused on river quality, water, water right. quality as well. Um, we don't partner with them a whole lot, um, but our data is always publicly available for anyone who needs to use it. All right. We all have a common purpose in keeping <laughs> the water clean in the Savannah River. Rachel Gonzalez, the research manager at the Finnezy Center for Water Services. Thanks for what you guys do out there on the water. Thank you.